Jane Robolo won the hearts of everyone here when she was a morning show anchor at CBS News. For family and health reasons, she started a new life in Atlanta. And then last year, she received a frightening medical diagnosis. Three weeks ago, she invited us to watch a promising new type of surgery that was an answer to her prayers. CBS News correspondent Mark Strassman reports. <laughs> Jane Robolo walks into the hospital sunny, even if it is 5.30 in the morning. I'm so glad to see you this morning. Everything then again, she got used to early hours. Welcome back to This Morning. I'm Jane Rovalo. Anchoring this broadcast in the 90s. Do you need anything for me other than But today, Jane's up for a completely different reason. Okay, uh, when you get done changing, just open the curtain. I'll get you ready. Okay. To save Thanks. her life. What would your prognosis be if you did nothing? If I did nothing, my heart would have to work so hard because this one valve is inefficient that eventually I would end up with congenital heart failure. I mean, it would eventually kill me. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. When Jane married CBS News cameraman Mario De Carvalho, they had no idea the vow in sickness and in health would be tested so soon. There were times when Mario would, would wake me up at night because he could feel my heart beating on the mattress. Told she needed a heart operation at 44, Jane started researching options. She learned about cutting-edge surgery without the big cut using tiny instruments guided by a robot. Significant surgery, open heart surgery. Three weeks later, you're good to go. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Uh, is he on the other right arm? Last year, robotic surgery was up more than 50%, with most of the increase in prostate surgery. Advocates say it has great promise, but like in all operations, there's risk, too. Oh, I love my little butt, man. The night before surgery, Jane has an extra cuddle with her son, George. He's only seven. He needs his mom. I, I want to be here with him when he has his first girlfriend. And dear Jesus, please help mom make it through her heart surgery. Okay. Are you worried about this tomorrow? I am, of course. You know, so they're going to stop her heart. You know, they essentially going to kill her uh, for, for quite some time and fix it, and then bring you back to life. Go get him, girl. Audio and video. Showtime. Showtime. At St. Joseph's Hospital in Atlanta, one of the leading hospitals to use this million-dollar robotic equipment for heart surgery, Dr. David Langford, Dr. Douglas Murphy, and their team are ready. Can you hit number four on the lights for me? Number one priority is keep you alive. Number two priority is repair that valve um, and, and, and stop the leak. And the third is to do it through the smallest incision. Fixing a valve with traditional open heart surgery involves cutting through the breastbone to reach the heart. It means months of recovery. Jane's highly unusual surgery is minimally invasive with a robotic assist. That means doctors make five incisions all less than three quarters of an inch long on her right side. Portals for robotic surgical instruments guided by a tiny 3D camera. But the biggest advantage to Jane's surgery is that by entering her body from the side, surgeons actually get a better view of her heart's mitral valve. We're watching Speechless, technology touching the mystery of life. You can see the heart beating inside its sac. See that nerve there? That's the nerve that goes to the diaphragm, which we will preserve. Dr. Murphy docks the robot and inserts its arms into Jane's chest. We have a whole bunch of interchangeable instruments with all different tips on them, and it just slides in here. Her heart is stopped. A heart-lung machine now keeps her alive. Four hands, two robotic, two human, work on Jane's heart all at once to fix its leaky valve. See those two jets of blood going backwards is bad. At a robotic console, a 3D computer screen and hand controls allow the surgeons to see and move tiny robotic right and left hands with zero hand tremor. Doctors Langford and Murphy attach four Gore-Tex threads to reinforce Jane's damaged mitral valve. It seems incredible, a heart repaired with string stitched by a robot. All right, well, there's the front parachute of the valve and here's the back parachute of the valve and uh, the 
see the two robotic arms and then the assistant, and he's going to slowly pull that stitch out. Right. It was just stunning to watch. Five hours of surgery flew by in a heartbeat. Everything went very really? smooth. Thank very you. smooth. Jane? And most important of all, now Jane's family could put their hearts at rest. And here she is, Jane Robolo, three weeks Yay. to the day after heart surgery. Hi. Oh, Renee, that was so incredible to watch, you I, know. It, it, I was doing other things while they were working on you me. You were, you were. Oh, that, <laughs> exactly. That's just such a remarkable thing to see. You sit down here and you say to me, look, there's no scar. Yeah, no scar. Because it had you had to go the traditional route, you'd had a scar that started up here, right around your Yeah, nose. and I probably wouldn't be able to fly to New York three weeks later either. You know, honestly, the scar was not really my concern you know being opened up you've got to do whatever you've got to do but now in hindsight I can tell you as a 45 year old woman I really if I can live without that big sure. thing at the middle of my chest you know yeah plus how do you take care of your son exactly. and do what all, mommies have to do you know recovering from it open takes heart so surgery. much longer for bones to heal and for that yeah. sternum to heal up and and we, they didn't even have to move any bones as you could see yeah. it was just incredible what's it like at 44 years old to be told you need to have heart surgery the, even though I knew that that was a possibility, Renee, hearing it from my cardiologist was something. I, I got to the parking garage before I called Mario, and I thought, well, I either am a woman of faith or I'm not a woman of faith, mm. and this is where the rubber meets the road. Mm. And I said, I, the part of me would like to just put my head on the steering wheel and cry and say, I don't want to do this. But I have so many friends who are dealing with so many more problems than that. And I said, this is where faith comes in. I wow. have to believe that whatever happens, I'm in God's hands. Mm. How did you find out about the surgery? I think it looked like you did what journalists do. You <laughs> put on your hat and you got on the Internet and you just started searching. Yeah, now add two journalists to that equation with me and Mario. Sure. Also, my sister knew some people in Greenville, South Carolina, my hometown, who had had this surgery in Atlanta with Dr. Murphy. And she said, please check this out. And then at the same time, my minister, who's also my boss and a dear friend, said, you really need to talk to David Langford. He's a wonderful surgeon. He goes to the church. Little did I know that the two of them work together. Uh -huh. So I called Dr. Langford. My sister made me promise I would get a second opinion. <laughs> so I kind of, okay, whatever. And I called Dr. Darn Langford. Darn those sisters. Darn those sisters. <laughs> and thank you, Natalie. I called Dr. Langford, expecting him just to rubber stamp what my plan was. Yeah, do the sternotomy, blah, blah, blah. And there's this silence. And he said... Actually, sternotomy is my third choice. We do a robotic assist here that has a three-week healing period instead of six weeks to 12 weeks. And that's the number one. I said, well, why didn't I know about that? Mm. So we did a little more research on the Internet. And then there were a couple of other options. There's, a, there's an option called eValve that's in trial studies at Columbia University that we checked into. But I wasn't a good candidate yeah. for that. Did you have any fear? I just have a couple seconds left. Any yeah. fear or trepidation about doing this? None, surgery? Renee. Really? None. None. And I think most of that is because of my faith. Mm. I knew that whatever the outcome, God is still in control. And secondly, when you have the greatest doctors at one of the finest hospitals in the world, your, your life is in their hands and it's secure. Well, let me fawn shamelessly and say I'm so glad to interview you. I've oh, watched you so from nice afar and it's so you. great to meet you. Well, and we watch you every morning and it's so great to see Harry and everybody again too. Yeah. Hey, Julie. Sorry, uh, old home week. Shane Robolo, good to see you. Take care.